so favorite science fiction novels. You know, I will tell you, when I was in high school, I had a great time. I read Jack Finney's Invasion of the Body Snatchers, right? The pulp sci-fi, anti-communist sci-fi novel of the 1950s. I enjoyed Invasion of the Body Snatchers. It was kind of fun. It was a fun thing. A lot of little anecdotes and stories. Um, what else do I like that's science fiction? Well, obviously, I just talked about Frankenstein. That's considered to be the first work of science fiction in all of history. Um, you know, I found the Arthur C. Clarke uh, series, uh, you know, the Space Odyssey. Uh, what was it called? Uh, the, the, I found that to be rather clever, uh, you know, with the obelisks and they find one on the moon and all that. I found that to be pretty clever. Um, you know, um, I actually would like to read, I haven't read, uh, the, uh, the, you know, was it the three body problem, which is the big sci-fi book in China. Science fiction is booming right now in China. I think that science fiction is more progressive. Fantasy often has this kind of medieval nostalgia about it. It's, you know, talking about magic and, you know, castles and authoritarianism and that there's often right wing themes in science fiction, like one or in fantasy novels. For example, uh, one uh, very, you know, very common theme in fantasy novels is someone's a king or someone's a prince and they've ended up by accident becoming a peasant and they have to, they spend the whole book or the whole novel or the whole movie trying to regain their throne. And that's an Ayn Rand thing, right? Every Ayn Randian thinks they're actually the king, they're actually the dictator, but it's only evil, evil socialism that's holding them back. They're the great one unrecognized. That's an Ayn Rand fantasy. That's really common in, in sci-fi novels or in fantasy novels. Science fiction, I argue, is more progressive. That said, though, there are exceptions within that. Heinlein, Robert Heinlein, is a reactionary. I mean, you know, he's a sci-fi writer, but he is a reactionary. Starship Troopers is, is a demented, demented love affair with British imperialism, uh, you know, and, it, and like the movie series they made based on Starship Troopers is like making fun of that. It's almost making fun of the books. If you read Robert Heinlein's Starship Troopers, it's demented. It's got a thing on the death penalty. I mean, a thing on corporal punishment. It's all about like, oh, you know, society is great because we've adopted the 1800s British system for outer space or something. It's pretty twisted. Um, you know, but, but then again, and like I said, there are exceptions within everything. Um, so, but yeah, sci-fi, because it's looking to the future, is more progressive. Um, whereas fantasy is more reactionary. But there's pretty progressive fantasy novels, and there's pretty reactionary sci-fi. But overall, I think there's a reason that the Soviet Union was all about sci-fi. That's true. The Soviet Union was obsessed with science fiction, right? And China today is obsessed with science fiction because they're progressive societies. Uh, the fantasy stuff, the Nazis were really, really into fantasy, right? For example, the Nazi party actually, you know, they used the story of the Sleeping Beauty to be an analogy for the Nazi state. And they would show Sleeping, Sleeping Beauty was the myth of, of the Nazi state, right? Um, and little kids in school, they would teach them that, that the story of Sleeping Beauty, right? And that the German people were the Sleeping Beauty and the wizard who put Sleeping Beauty asleep was the, the Jew or whatever. And that, that Hitler was the handsome prince who wakes up the, 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 the German people. I mean, it's sick, right? You know, and that, that, you know, fantasy and that kind of knights and castles and mystical, that's a big part of fascism. It really is. I mean, it's a big part of fascism. The fascists tended to push to push fantasy, and communists tend to push sci-fi. There's a reason for that. There's a reason for that. And uh, that's why, I, but at the end of the day, one can write a progressive fantasy novel, and one can write a reactionary sci-fi novel. Um, but there you go. Now, someone on here just said Tolkien was fascist. Apparently, he wasn't. Apparently, you know, there is like a weird, like, Evola-esque nostalgia, especially at the end of the Tolkien novels when they're looking back and it's like, oh, the, you know, the, the world of men is coming in and all the magic and myths are going away. But other than that, people really can't find any politics in Tolkien. Uh, you know, some people thought that You Shall Not Pass uh, was a reference to Spain, but apparently he wrote it before that, so he was not referencing Spain. And, you know, I, in Tolkien, there's not much politics there. Um, other than the kind of, like, oddly... There's an odd, like, Roman Catholic thing about guilt and, like, vice and sin that you can read in with the magic ring, right? That's kind of about, like, the Catholic teaching on vice, right? Your vice controls you. Your guilt controls you. Um, you know, that's kind of the Catholic teaching there. And then at the end, when all the elves and 
wizards and all that go away and you have the world of men and it's like sad because the men you know are not as beautiful as all these magical creatures that are going away that's kind of like a julia savola kind of julia savola had this like nostalgia for you know the, the, you know the organic state he called it so that's kind of a fascisty kind of thing but other you know it's more traditionalist than fascist actually i mean it was you know the not, the, the italian fascists are the ones that promoted evola but evola's ideas were not exactly in line with mussolini and all of that I, I mean, Tolkien's not a progressive. I mean, there's nothing socialist about it. It's certainly, it's certainly got a conservative edge to it, but I wouldn't call it fascist. It's just, it's Tolkien. And to be fair, you know, again, people miss this, but the occult, mysticism, all of that stuff is on the right, right? People don't realize that. You know, prior to the Second World War in Europe, Christianity was the mainstream view. You were, you know, most people in Europe were Christians. People on the far left were atheists and scientific dialectical materialists, and people on the far right were into the mystical, magical occult shit, right? Now in the United States, that's all been totally confused. Aleister Crowley was on the far right. Uh, you know, uh, Julius Evola was on the far right, right? And that the magical, mystical, the Thule society, all that stuff was far right wing. In fact, the leader of the Silver Legion of America, which was a big fascist group during the 1930s, was William Dudley Pillay, and he was an occultist. He, he did seances where people talked to spirits, and he was this occult guy, and he would have been an occultist. Oh, okay, and, and that his fascist beliefs were in line with occultism. Um, so the occult, occultism, right, uh, you know, was associated with the far right. In the 1960s, though, hippieism and the New Age, you know, the synthetic left, adopted a lot of like new age stuff and so now people think new age is on the left but it's not i mean the essence of a lot of new age stuff is very very right wing right it's about it's about you know you know do as thou wilt and finding your own will and no society will hold you back it's kind of an ayn rand you know i mean the libertarian party has a lot of those what is it called the oto the the alistair crowley cult that that's big among libertarians and ayn rand kind of people you know it's big trumpers there's a lot of oto kind of people that are into Trump. Um, you know, when it comes to the, the um, you know, the, you know, I mean, yes, I mean, now, now there are, there, Wiccanism, uh, there's like a feminist edge to a lot of that. Um, but it's still got this like, you know, like nature is the best and society was the best when people worshiped mother goddess before they started worshiping, you know, modern religions. And there's still a weird, like, you know, pagan go back to the way things used to be that the occult in general is looking back backward. Right? That's the essence of New Ageism. The essence of the occult is looking backward. It is about looking backward in some way or other. Ramiro says fascists worship Baal and Moloch. Exactly. Right? That, that, that there's, an, there's some looking backward in all of occultism, in all of New Ageism. There's an essence, a, a, an aspect of looking backwards. Um, so I, the New Age, the occult, that stuff is reactionary. Right? And I would argue Christianity is more progressive than that stuff. I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, maybe there's Wiccans who go to peace marches and stuff. But at the end of the day, in the essence of what they believe, Christianity is more progressive because Christianity has a progressive message. It, you know, and that the occultism, if you boil down the beliefs of any of these mystical, new age occult groups, if you boil them down, in essence, what they believe is reactionary. Um, but that's my opinion. And I, I apologize if there are, you know, Wiccans or occultists watching this who think I'm dead wrong. I could be dead wrong, um, but in my experience, based on what I've studied, uh, which I haven't, I mean, I've read some about Aleister Crowley and his life story, and I've read some about different things, and I've looked into the Eastern mystics and the role that Eastern mysticism played in the CIA's anti-communism, and so I know some of this stuff, and, and based on my assessment that New Ageism is inherently, inherently conservative, um, but, you know, there you go.